despite the rapid development of military aviation, speed is still one of the key parameters. And although there are countless impressive iron birds, only a few of them can claim the title of the fastest in the world. Which ones? That's what you're about to find out right now. The first to enter our list is the European Multi-Role Generation 4.5 fighter, the Eurofighter Typhoon. The aircraft was made according to the canard aerodynamic design, and not by chance, because this feature greatly improves agility and maneuverability, allowing it to perform high-G maneuvers, which gives it an advantage in close combat at low speeds at high angles of attack. The design also increases the surface area of the wing, providing more lift, allowing the Typhoon to carry larger payloads than its peers. The fighter is equipped with two Eurojet EJ-200 engines, each of which provides thrust of up to 13,500 lbf on dry thrust and over 20,230 lbf in afterburner. Powerful installations allow the Typhoon to perform supersonic cruise without afterburners and move at a speed of Mach 1.5 in super cruise mode. The maximum speed of the device, according to open sources, can reach up to Mach 2. To date, around 680 Typhoons have been ordered around the world, and the cost of one such aircraft is $124 million which, to the surprise of most aviation enthusiasts, is much more expensive than even the best fifth-generation stealth fighter, Lockheed Martin's F-35 Lightning II, which costs anywhere from 70 to 80 million dollars. However, even that is still not as colossally expensive as our next guest's price. We're talking about the fifth-generation reference fighter, Born during the Cold War as part of one of the most daring advanced tactical fighter or ATF aviation programs, the F-22 Raptor. The shape of the F-22 is a compromise of sorts, combining the minimalization of drag for better aerodynamics with the minimalization of radar and infrared visibility in favor of the stealth that is gaining wild popularity. Unlike Northrop Grumman's stealthy F-117 Nighthawk, the F-22 doesn't have right angles on the outside. Instead, most surface shapes are curves with varying radius, scattering radar beams in different directions rather than back at the radar source. They are also assisted in deceiving enemy radar by sawtooth cockpit edges, landing gear doors, and vertical stabilizers angled to deflect the radar, hiding the internal antennas. Additionally, the coating applied to the skin of the aircraft absorbs radar energy, and the cockpit is designed to minimize reflections even from the pilot's helmet. Pratt & Whitney's twin F-19 afterburner turbofans give the F-22 a solid thrust rating of 35,000 pounds each. The ability to maintain supersonic flight without the use of afterburners allows the Raptor to intercept targets that other afterburner-equipped aircraft would not lacking enough fuel to do so. The thrust and aerodynamics of the F-22 provide it with a regular combat speed of Mach 1.5 at 50,000 feet and over Mach 2 with the afterburner, which in turn guarantees a 50% increase in the range to air-to-air -air missiles, as well as twice the effective range for JDAM as compared to other air platforms. The last F-22, the 195th, was delivered to the military back in 2012, and the cost of said tail then was about $150 million. In 2016, the U.S. Air Force became interested in how much it would cost to resume production of the legendary Raptor, finding out that the purchase of 194 additional fighters would cost approximately $50 billion or about $206 to $216 million per aircraft. The long gap from the end of production meant the need to hire new workers and find suppliers which would affect the price, and definitely not lessen it. One way or another, the replacement of the F-22 by the 6th generation NGAD fighters is already on the way, and we're now moving on to the next aircraft. WS-201A, or 1954 Interceptor, that was the name of the program, whose participants gave the world one of the best all-weather interceptors ever created. 
the Convair F-106 Delta Dart, also known as the Ultimate Interceptor. The Delta Dart was originally developed as a modification of the F-102 Delta Dagger in the early 1950s, retaining the Delta Wing design. But due to extensive structural changes, including the fuselage and a more powerful Pratt & Whitney J-75 turbojet engine, the aircraft ended up with a completely different designation, the F-106. On one hand, the J-75 engine was larger than the F-102A's predecessor, the J-57, and had a higher mass flow, which even led to a change in the air intakes, providing it with more airflow. On the other hand, the engine change allowed the aircraft to leave a significant mark on the history of U.S. aviation. On December 15, 1959, Delta Dart pilot Major Joseph W. Rogers set a world speed record of 1,525.96 miles per hour, or Mach 2.31 at 40,500 feet. And later that year, so did aviation pioneer Charles E. Myers. Having accelerated the F-106 to 1,544 miles per hour. Furthermore, the brainchild of Convair was one of the first semi-autonomous military weapon platforms, being equipped with the Hughes MA-1 integrated fire control system, working in conjunction with the Semi-Automatic Ground Environment, or SAGE, protection system. These took control of the aircraft shortly after takeoff and guided it to the target at the correct height and position for the most effective attack. However, the F-106 was a highly specialized and rather expensive device to operate, and its characteristics largely depended on the presence of complex radar systems and auxiliary equipment. The capabilities of the Delta Dart played an important role in U.S. defense during the Cold War, but as a result of the U.S. Air Force not wanting to deploy an interceptor outside the country, none of the 342 aircraft built at a cost of $32 million, adjusted for inflation a total of $4.7 million in the 70s, ever had their true test of combat. When Top Gun hit the theaters in 1986, despite its specific subject matter for a blockbuster, it was so successful in awakening general interest in aviation that the Grumman F-14 Tomcat fighter is still considered no less of a star in the picture than Tom Cruise is. The 1970s, in principle, became one of the most productive decades for U.S. military aviation, because it was then that three fighters appeared at once, which are still able to hold their own even against modern combat aircraft from other countries. These being the following. Grumman F-14 Tomcat, McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle, and General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. The Tomcat could fly to 30,000 feet per minute, fly at speeds up to Mach 2.34, and carry about 16,000 pounds of payload, including AIM-9 Sidewinder short-range heat-sinking air-to-air missiles, as well as AIM-7 medium-range Sparrow, and radar-guided long-range AIM-54 Phoenix capable of targeting an enemy bomber over 100 miles away. All this goodness was fueled by two General Electric F-110 GE400 turbofan afterburner jet engines, each of which produced more than 28,000 pounds of thrust. The F-14 was a fighter designed for a war that never happened, since its main task was to neutralize the most powerful Soviet nuclear bombers. Shortly after the collapse of the USSR and the end of the Cold War, 65 of the 712 built Tomcats were upgraded to use Tactical Airborne Reconnaissance Pod Systems, or TARPs, making these fighters a high-performance reconnaissance vehicle. The rest of the F-14s in service have been converted to make them more suitable for air-to-ground attack platforms. In 2006, the F-14 was retired in favor of the slower but cheaper Boeing F-A-18EF Super Hornet. Despite the modest price of $38 million for an F-14 in 1973, today, adjusted for inflation, such an aircraft would cost more than $258 million, which is significant compared to the F-15EX, which costs about $87.9 million. But we're here to talk about the fastest iron birds. So let's focus on the F-14 Tomcat's counterpart, the F-15 Eagle Tactical Fighter. 
developed on the sidelines of McDonnell Douglas. Like its wing brother, the F-15 can reach 30,000 feet in just a minute, and its maneuverability comes from low wing loading and high thrust to weight ratio, allowing the aircraft to make sharp turns without losing airspeed. At certain speeds, the dynamic thrust of the twin afterburner Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW220 engines, up to 23,770 pounds of thrust each, exceeds the Eagle's combat weight and drag, so it can accelerate vertically. And with a top speed of Mach 2.54 and Hughes Aircraft's advanced AN-APG-63 all-weather radar in the nose of the fighter, it can easily detect even low-flying enemy vehicles up to 200 miles away. Moreover, this radar system was the first to use a programmable system processor, allowing updates and improvements to be made without the need to replace hardware. Now, in the era of the F-35 and the principle of modularity confidently spread all over the planet, it's rather difficult to truly surprise anyone. As of 2023, the F-15 has not only been produced at 1,972 units, but remains in active service with the U.S. Air Force and its allies, considered one of the most successful and massive fighter projects in history. And let's be honest, at a time when stealth won't help, 29,000 pounds of ammunition under the wing at Mach 2.5 is a great plan B. In 1967, the USSR introduced its MiG-25 Foxbat, a supersonic fighter interceptor that entered service three years later. Its top speed of Mach 2.83 is powered by two Tomonsky R-15B-300 turbojets, capable of delivering up to 22,500 lbf using an afterburner. And although experts argued that the thrust of the Soviet apparatus would be enough even to overcome the speed of Mach 3.2, it was decided to limit it in order to prevent the engines from overheating at higher speeds. Moreover, due to the thermal stresses that occur when flying at speeds above Mach 2, the McCoy & Gervich Design Bureau encountered difficulties in choosing materials for the aircraft. A compromise was the use of heat-resistant E2 plexiglass for the cockpit canopy and high-strength stainless steel for the wings and fuselage, although ideally the developers wanted to use titanium. The arrival of the MiG-25, with impressive speed and a theoretical altitude ceiling of 89,000 feet, caused great concern in the West and led to a dramatic increase in the performance of the F-15 Eagle. But after one of these aircraft fell into the hands of American and Japanese specialists due to the defection of Soviet Lieutenant Viktor Belenko, they realized that the Foxbat was not a superfighter to be feared. The aircraft was soon returned to the Soviets in disassembled form with parts missing, and the serial production of the MiG-25 ended in 1984, when 1,186 of these fighters were built. The Foxbat became the second fastest mass-produced military aircraft. Only one machine was able to overtake it. It's called the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. It doesn't make sense to talk about the recognition of this aircraft. If the Northrop B-2 Spirit gave visual reinforcement to the world's stealth in the form of a stylish black triangle, then the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird has become a symbol of the word speed for all aircraft around the world. Additionally, the Blackbird was the second operational aircraft after the Lockheed A-12 to be designed in the shape and materials of a stealth aircraft, an early attempt at stealth design. In parallel with the minimum radar cross-section, the greatest protection of the unique reconnaissance aircraft was the combination of an insane altitude, more than 85,000 feet, and an equally insane speed of Mach 3.4, making it almost invulnerable. If the pilot detected the launch of ground-to-air missiles, then he simply accelerated the plane, pushing ahead of the missile and leaving it behind. That is, even when the enemy knew that a Blackbird was operating in his airspace, he couldn't do anything about it. Moreover, over 4,000 missiles were fired at the SR-71 during combat flights, according to U.S. Air Force data compiled from pilot reports and other intelligence sources. However, none of them managed to catch up with it. But today, the era of stealth has come to replace the era of speed. 
After all, even if your plane dodged all the missiles fired by the enemy, he knows that you were in his airspace. In the conditions of modern air defense, which have become many times more advanced, it's unlikely that you, even being a strong military country, will want to leave any trace on enemy radars. After all, no one needs a diplomatic headache, an international scandal, and even more so, a potential nuclear conflict, right? What high-speed aircraft do you know about? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.